Today, once again, we're looking at French words used in English: bric-a-brac, puissant, baroque, and joie de vivre. Learn what they mean, how to pronounce them, and how to use them in sentences. Do keep watching to add a touch of French elegance and flavor to your conversations. But first, do subscribe to the English Nut on YouTube, X, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you. Bric-a-brac refers to a collection of small, often ornamental items or curiosities, usually with sentimental rather than monetary value. It conjures up images of quaint antique shops or an eclectic living room full of knickknacks. Her mantelpiece was adorned with a charming display of bric-a-brac collected over the years. At the flea market, he sifted through the bric-a-brac, hoping to find hidden treasure. The attic was full of old bric-a-brac, each piece telling a sentimental story. The word bric-a-brac emerged in the 19th century from the obsolete French phrase "à bric et à brac," meaning "at random" or "odds and ends." suggesting a jumbled collection. In modern times, bric-a-brac has also come to represent a form of nostalgia, with vintage and second-hand items becoming attractive for their charm and history. Alas, time makes bric-a-brac of everything, no matter how important. The way Rick Riordan uses bric-a-brac in this quote emphasizes the sense it carries of things that lack any real value. Riordan is a best-selling author of books for young readers. The word bric-a-brac was suggested by Krishna Shorkar. In French, it's pronounced puisson, with a silent t, though its feminine form, spelt with an e at the end, is pronounced with a soft t sound at the end, puissant. In English, it's pronounced puissant or puissant. Puissant is a word brimming with power and strength. To be puissant is to be mighty, influential, and commanding. Qualities that have shaped empires and moved mountains. The puissant king ruled his land with a firm yet just hand. Her arguments were puissant, leaving no room for doubt or opposition. The puissant roar of the waterfall filled the valley, a testament to nature's might. In Shakespeare's play Julius Caesar, Metellus Cimber is one of the conspirators in the plot against Caesar. His job is to distract Caesar before the assassination. Metellus kneels before Caesar and says, "Most high, most mighty, and most puissant Caesar, Metellus Cimber throws before thy seat an humble heart." Caesar responds, "Thy brother by decree is banished." If thou dost bend and pray and fawn for him, I spurn thee like a cur out of my way. The word puissant was suggested by Shorbani Bhattacharji. Baroque refers to a style of European art, music, and architecture from the 17th and early 18th centuries, characterized by ornate detail and dramatic expression. Pronounced Baroque or Baroque in English, the word was adapted into the English language from the French word Baroque, which is pronounced with a slightly rolled R. It originally meant irregularly shaped and was used by the French primarily to describe pearls that were not of the standard spherical shape. Over time, it evolved to define a lavish art style marked by curving lines, gilt, and gold. Prominent in the 17th century, this art form was often seen as excessively decorated and intricate. Hence, it's fitting that the term baroque has expanded to refer to anything that appears overly ornate or elaborate. The baroque architecture of the cathedral is breathtaking. The concert featured works by baroque composers like Bach and Vivaldi. Her wedding cake was a baroque creation, covered in intricate icing details and dozens of sugar flowers. His speech was so baroque, laden with flowery language and grandiose metaphors, that it lost the audience's attention. According to Joe Bonamassa, 
American guitarist and singer-songwriter, if we got into a time machine and went back to the 1700s, classical and Baroque music would have been the equivalent of Beyonce and Jay-Z. The word Baroque was suggested by Raya Shorkar. Joie de vivre. This delightful phrase literally translates to joy of living, and it refers to an exuberant love for life. It's the feeling of being in the moment, enjoying life to its fullest, and savoring the simple pleasures. Her joie de vivre was infectious, making everyone around her feel lighter and happier. The streets of Paris are filled with a certain joie de vivre that captivates tourists and locals alike. Despite the challenges he faced, he never lost his joie de vivre. This phrase comes directly from French, combining joie, joy, and vivre, to live. It's been used in English since the late 19th century to describe someone's zest for life. In French culture, joie de vivre is a celebrated attitude reflecting a deep appreciation for good food, good company, and the pleasures of everyday existence. It's a philosophy of embracing life with enthusiasm, no matter the circumstances. Jamie Cat Callan is an American author who was reared by a French grandmother. In her book, Bonjour Happiness, Secrets to Finding Your Joie de Vivre, she writes, Joie de vivre is an attitude. It's a decision you make to live a life of joy. It's an invitation to this dance called life. All you have to do is leave the door slightly ajar and listen for the music. The word joie de vivre was suggested by Lopa, Maharati. Whether you're describing a collection of knickknacks, appreciating the ornate, taking on the powerful, or expressing a joy for life, these French words add a sense of charm, elegance, and emotion that transcends borders and languages. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Merci for joining me on this episode. Until next time, I'm the English nut. Au revoir.